can puff them like s slowly with a drink and they're more enjoyable but the big fat like cubans yeah yeah you have to cut them like yeah. in half or like finish it the next day there, or there are folks yeah. that can smoke the whole thing all right impossible yeah. right i, I don't it's know how the, you do it there's folks that go through whole, their whole day with like it in yeah. their mouth and yeah oh, wolverine right <laughs> like who's he do we this wolverine he smokes cigars x-men oh, show, show us a clip how, how does he live forever <laughs> show us a clip it's <laughs> uh, riddled with lung cancer <laughs> But he heals. Is this recording? This is great. It's recording. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Great roll. All okay. right, let's let's get to it. All right, let's uh, roll three, two, one. Um, let me get my uh, thoughts lined up quickly. Um, Some prepared just like remarks. Intro. <laughs> <laughs> prepared remarks. All right. So I have prepared remarks this time. <laughs> Welcome everyone. It's episode two, and in this one, we're going to be talking about central lock wheels, central lock system. Is yes. that how we call it? Yes. For sure. Center lock hubs. Yeah. Center lock hubs. Before we dive into it, let's quickly talk about our first episode. What, what was your take? How did it turn out for you, for you both? Uh, I loved watching myself. No. <laughs> 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 I think it was a good, it was a good podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Half the views were from Lucas. <laughs> Constantly streaming. Well, thank I, you. I had it on replay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, it, Slim picking is on the views this one. Uh, I don't think we did. I, I didn't do a good job of marketing it. And I, I posted it at the wrong time on a Wednesday night mm -hmm. or Wednesday afternoon or something like that. Maybe this one we'll post on a Sunday instead. Let's not yeah. overlook the hair and makeup budget. It I, just wasn't there on the first one. Hey, you got to support us, man. Yeah. Like, we, we can't yeah. do this without your support. Well, these things get, I think, better with time, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I, I had fun. That I think that was the the cool part of it. I yeah. hope you both had fun. Obviously, yeah. you come back. We came back to more punishment. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> but, you know, the great thing, we would be doing this anyways. If yeah. we were to get, we'd, if this is just nicer than in someone's garage. Yeah, it's uh, true. Freezing in minus 12 weather today. So Yeah. yeah. Well, eventually, we can transition to garages and see if I can bring this gear over and set up a different layer. All right. Mobile podcast. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Before we dive into the core topic of central lock hubs, central lock wheel systems, uh, notable thing this week, Ferrari, or uh, sorry, not Ferrari, Formula One. Yes. Testing yes. this week. Yeah. Day Bar one, room. day two. No, day one, two sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, they've done two days. So. Oh, they've done two days. Today okay. was yeah. day two. Day two. Um, I've, I've only gotten through the first four hours of day one, the morning and afternoon session. Yeah. So I'm, I'm light on conclusions, but, <laughs> uh, but you know, some early, early observations. Uh, I think they're about a second and a half of last year's qualifying time. Leclerc oh, yeah. would have been at a minute 30 per lap uh, or qualifying lap. And I think they're a minute 31 right now. Uh, strangely posted by uh, Guang, uh, Guangzhou Yu. Zhu. Yes. the B Williams? From Alfa Romeo. Alfa, Alfa. Romeo. Yeah. Alfa. yeah. I, interesting changes to the cars too, right? They've interpreted the, the regulations and the rules in such a way that <clears throat> the cars are significantly different than last year, I would, I would say. Some. Uh, yeah, I think the big question is, are they going to suffer from the same porpoising effect they had last season at the beginning? Mm. Uh, how much of that they reduced or, or fixed? Um, there was a lot of last season. We also saw a lot of, uh, wheel lockups. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of that in these sessions as yeah. well. I mean, I, I, I skipped all of the four hour session. I just went to the, the, the highlights, the highlight. <laughs> well, I, I don't cold <clears throat> notes. Yeah. Just give me the bullet points, please. <laughs> and and I, as I said, I've only seen the first day, but it looks like the track, a lot of the cars are, you know, they're seeing sparks flying, a lot of contact patches hitting, hitting asphalt. Maybe, maybe it's not just isolated Mercedes. I'll, I'll reserve judgment till I can see the full testing, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe the, it's just the, the track, right? The results so far. I mean, I get it. Like yeah. they're testing, they're still preparing the car, they're tuning the car. Yeah. Um, it's not the final car that they'll get into it next yeah. week, right? So it could be significantly different after this testing as well. Yeah. When I see sparks flying, though, it means yeah. there's two things that can happen. <laughs> you know, the porpoising was the effect of the car being too low. Yeah. So if they raise the car slightly or maybe soften yeah. the suspension, maybe it reduced porpoising to allow for, you know, yeah. some sort of more travel. So we'll see what happens once we once, once the season starts, right? Yeah. It's interesting to see... You know how uh, Mercedes had the no side pod design? 
Yes. Ferrari seems to have taken a kind of similar approach approach as well. It's it's not a no side pod, but it's a very skinny, narrow side pod type. Uh, did, did, approach. Yeah, yeah. On did you see the dimpling on the Ferrari nose cone under you know under speed uh, because you know the, the aerodynamic the forces it was actually dimpling the nose because the carbon the, yeah, everything for weight savings mm -hmm. the nose cone was was buckling. Oh wow! Under yeah, it was, maybe it's intended you have to look behavior. At that footage. No, it def that definitely was no. wasn't. Um, you know, maybe they just need to strengthen, not so thin on the the carbon fiber. Yeah, you know? I'm looking forward to the the new season as well. It's going to be fun. If uh, I mean the results so far uh, out of practice, you know, they're not going 100 percent out there, so we know it's not anything that we can conclude on. No, but yeah. the results look very close to what it was last year, right? Yeah. In terms of what on the leaderboards, Rankings. other yeah. than Williams, big surprise. Williams is doing well. Yeah, well, they're putting in a lot of laps. Mm -hmm. I think the first yeah uh, day one they had the most yeah. uh, laps. I think. Oh. Um, well, the other the other big F one news, uh, Drive to Survive. Yes. yes. Dropped today. Yes. Uh, I haven't seen. I know you've watched. I've that, watched. So no I've spoilers. Watched, okay. I've watched an episode. Yeah. Well, the well, we know how this we, we know what happened. <laughs> did Verstappen right? win? <laughs> did, <laughs> did he win the season? Um, yeah. But it's all the drama behind the scenes that I think is going to be fun to see. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to reliving that first race from last year because I I thought that was the best one of the best races of the season. Well, I, and I was, was in Dominican Republic in a hotel, ready. We were sort of getting ready to depart to the airport and like. We had it on our phones. We we're doing everything to soak mm -hmm. every last minute of that of that race. It was incredible. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I don't I, remember it as much. So it was, I think, uh, Red Bull or Verstappen and uh, Leclerc. They did, I think, they passed each other back and forth uh, uh, five or six times within, yeah, yeah, within a lap or two laps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it, it, it was a good battle. Yeah, and the season was interesting because Ferrari was up there with Red Bull. Yeah. And then towards the end of the season, Ferrari was really falling behind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Mercedes caught up. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how they perform this year. Yeah. I, I hope they learned uh, around strategy and some of the lessons. Because I, I saw this great uh, this, uh, F1 vlogger who did this great analysis that said, like, actually worked out, said if, if they didn't have problems with strategy and mechanical failure, here's what the points would have looked like. Mm. And it would have been a very close season. Yeah. And well, they, they a have lot. a new team principal now too. Yes. So yeah. That could be a big yeah. game changer for them as well. I mean, I mean, where did he come from? What was the team he was at before? I don't know where he was. The before. new guy. Um, I hate these questions. Though. I mean, I, I, I we don't. I have just to don't know, know, right? know right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't Google, know. Google box that up. Yeah. I mean, um, it's not a core topic, but it, yeah. it, either, either way, I think it's going to be an exciting next week i mean uh, this week we get to start watching we're, we're yeah drive to survive is now seven days uh from now is uh is the actual first the race, race. bahrain yeah uh, it's gonna be fun Can't I, I love i love those Excited. middle east races because you know you're not gonna probably have to deal with rain uh, that to me sometimes can ruin the race yeah oh yeah, yeah. well i mean they they get sandstorms hmm. yeah. living there for 18 years yeah, you would know not bahrain but dubai Right. Um, but yes, yeah, sandstorms are a thing. Yeah. I mean, that could ruin someone's race pretty bad too. Yeah. But I guess you can't really race. You, like in rain, you can race because you have tires for that. But in a sandstorm, it's just, it's you're not racing. Intake, taking all that sand. Yeah. That's not going anywhere. No. Right. right. Have they had that happen in a race? I don't know. I've no. never I haven't seen that, to be honest. No. Mm -hmm. I don't think they will race in a scenario like that. If I, it I think happen. they're seasoned, like where they, where they, where they mm. take place. Is at a time in, uh, in the season where they don't have those storms, probably, right? So mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just guessing. <laughs> okay, let's dive into the core topic, I guess, now. I mean, uh, center lock hubs, center lock wheel systems, the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's your take on them? Yeah, I mean, at a, at a, I have center lock wheels uh, on my car, and the pros are, I think, I think they look great. I think they complement most wheel designs well to motorsport look. Mm. Uh, the cons are, you know, unlike Lucas, who after every drive can take his wheel off and, and detail it, it's a little more involved of a process to get your wheels off, you know, do light maintenance. Yeah, so just get, be, be a con. Uh, get carbon ceramic brakes and you're golden. Call it a day. That's <laughs> Call it a day. The easy $26,000 uh, <laughs> option. Very, that's very clever. Yeah. <laughs> This a pro is the look. I, I I prefer the look of a center lock wheel for the most part. I think it's a 
like Eric mentioned, a very motorsport look. It's it's cleaner because you have less things going on in the wheel. Yeah. Uh, some wheels look good with a five bolt, uh, just depending on design. Yeah. But some wheels look better with a center lock. Um, and that in terms new of HRE, that was the R101 yeah. lightweight looks f phenomenal in a yeah. five lug because it has those deep pockets that carve out that yeah. spoke that it's lead fluid, towards the right? bolt. It's not a sharp indent. That's right. So. Uh, they kind of maintain the same concept with the center lock, though. Mm -hmm. They just kept that pocket obviously full, mm -hmm. and they have a center lock in the middle. Um, in terms of cons, yeah, Eric kind of nailed it. It's it's a kind of a pita uh, to remove and yeah. to clean and all the tools. But you know, we've been seeing a lot of new tools and machines yeah. and and impacts that uh, remove the wheels easier than than uh, than what was possible a couple of years ago, for example, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, we've seen that sort of uh, impact wrench type tool that Obsessed Garage was showcasing yeah. a while back. Yeah, it's it was a prototype then, but now you can readily purchase them now. I think the way they five five thousand dollars. Is that how much it is? Yeah. I, holy it's, it's yeah. I'm, I'm, so yeah, I've been I've been watching. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the with the UK um, YouTuber, but he actually he bought Adam LT's uh, LZ's, yeah. LZ's yeah. Um, old GT3. And he's using Tavares's shop to right. uh, repair the car. Mm. And the first thing that they said is that, how do we get these wheels off, right? They don't have any tools. So he actually had a gun. Uh, it's, I'm not sure what the brand is. It's a great gun, Impact. But it, re it removes center locks uh, just at, at, you know, with the pull, pull of a trigger. Yeah. But it's $5,000. That's yeah. insane. I mean, yeah. that's one of the biggest downfalls as well with uh, center locks. Even... Even shops are not equipped with yeah. these, right? Like if you yeah. go to a, a, you know, your right. third party garage or whatever. They don't have that. Uh, yeah, tools imagine you needed roadside assistance. Yeah. And you didn't have your oh, 445 pound foot. I know a wrench. guy. Oh, easy. Mike, tire. easy tire. Easy, ah, easy tire, Mike. Yeah. And he's, he's this episode's sponsor. <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy tire, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're not a sponsor, be a sponsor. Yeah. You know the one, I don't, it, it might be up there. Um, yet buying wheels i don't know if this is the point. like when i was going through the process of looking for for wheels what i was trying to do is correct the offsets oh. which which a non center lock wheel could easily solve with spacers that's right mm -hmm. center locks uh, yeah there's my uh beauty let's just soak that in um <laughs> but you can't so dark pebble yeah can you, know, can can you burn it up a little bit so we can see the splash <laughs> but you you can't use spacers right no. and uh if you're trying to eliminate that tuck of the wheel uh, you're, you're investing, which is, I guess, you know, happy to do anyways, to get a, a nicer light for forged wheel. Well, you just mm -hmm. need to know someone that knows how to calculate these offsets correctly right off the bat. Cause there's no room for error, right? There is no room for error. Yeah. None. <laughs> None. We didn't reckoning through this episode without talking about <laughs> mistakes that were made. Uh. <laughs> well, you're, 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 it was a BBS wheel. Like they... You know, yeah, but their offsets were not that no, aggressive, yeah, no, right? You don't get to choose, right? Yeah. You, you don't get to choose. And BBS is known for, they're a great motorsport wheel. But in terms of aesthetics, they're they're very conservative in offset. So yeah. um, on a streetcar, they don't look as aggressive as something you can spec yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, and I, I noticed that firsthand too. When I put them on, mm -hmm. I'm like, what's going Cause, on? Because you were uh, 48 mil, if I remember. Or not? I, I for, choose you know, to just erase that part offset. of my memory. My, and I, I'm forty in the forty in the rear. <laughs> but not forty on what widths, right? Uh, we were the same, nineteen by twelve. Oh, 12. I was twelve and a half. Oh, twelve okay. and a half at the back. So that's why he was he was a higher offset. Okay. So you could have been close to the same offset actually, right. or same right. distance from the hub. Yeah, right? yeah half an inch. Eight I, I try to do the GT3 RS right. spec. Mm -hmm. no. Also, I advised you not to do that. I I know, I know. <laughs> So, anyways, Wait, that's a, that's another topic. We'll that's get a, to that. That's right. one let's, more let's, topic. Let's go to the but next episode. Let's go to the archives. The... <laughs> but uh, Prabhu you know, and regrets. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Prabhu and regrets. Yes, yeah. Carrera we, we don't, 9 Do we have time DTS. for this? Like, okay. this be a four-hour <laughs> podcast. Yeah, we'll do it after. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll do a two two take. Okay. <laughs> I thought you know when we when when you bought the topic of central lock wheels, central lock hubs. I thought it was interesting to kind of look back at a history of where it all began, where did yeah. you know, this concept come from and how it morphed to what it is today. And um, I, doing a little bit of Googling and a little bit of Wikipedia help, I mean, if you think about it, the center lock system way before 1900s on that cart and carriage, yeah. they used it. Is that the Ford Model T with CCBs? 
Oh, that's <laughs> that right. That's, that's, right. that's the one, right? There you go. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. It looked familiar. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if these had breaks then. No. So. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the quote again, Eric? Uh, well, Henry Ford's quote was, you can have any Porsche you want. You just can't have PCCVs with it. <laughs> Sorry. So it didn't have PCCVs yeah. then. Yeah. Hence why. Okay. Yeah. The horse was the brake. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it was interesting around the 1900 range, there was a guy named, uh, Rudge Whitworth. I hope I'm not, uh, butchering. His he's name. dead now. Does, yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. He's not, he's not offended. <laughs> he's not going to correct you. Uh, <laughs> but, but it, he built this uh, knockoff, uh, system for bicycles. Okay. Uh, the wheel, like the wire mesh wheel design with a, a knockoff center hub. Uh, and, and it was around that time, 1908, that he patented it and it got picked up by Grand Prix racing and all that. So in the 1930s, like 13s, the cars in that era were these mesh wheel designs with the, the knockoff hub. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that makes sense. When you think about like if you were to like, you know, an early uh motorsport enthusiast or designing this, that's how you'd probably design it. You're not going to design something with five, you know. Yeah, five or six. You're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna have one. One. What's the most efficient way to remove put it, it on and right. remove it completely? Yeah. Uh, and then these things were just like a little mallet and go, and then right it comes right off. I guess I don't fully understand all of this. But then in 1922, there was a guy named Carlo uh, Borani who took this patent and licensed it for uh, for for making it popular in a lot okay. of other brands, right? And this is where Porsche and Auto Union, Audi. Mm -hmm. Uh, what it is today, Alfa Romeo. Is that what Audi was they, called before? Yeah. Auto Union? Yeah. That's a horrible name. Tarsi. So, <laughs> so the RS6, for God's sakes. There is a big, uh, I mean, history behind all of this as well before the wars, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know the history behind how no, it transitioned. Yeah, I didn't great. know that. That's it's news right. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it was, the gorgeous car is that Mira. It, the Lamborghini had the knockoff center lock center hub thing mm -hmm. as well and then you were highlighting this as well the corvette Th that was my first I, I know it was big in the hot rod uh era but i remember c2 my friend's a huge corvette collector uh and the c2 i think yeah that's the c2 was the first introduction so like 1963 64 uh is when they started using it and the the pro we complain about today's process in terms of having to buy the special torque wrench with the hammers, like what I knew about that was it's a lead, it's a hammer with a lead. The, the mount portion is lead where you strike. And they did that because you didn't want to damage the chrome mm -hmm. on the knockoff. Oh. But, but you could literally use it for one wheel change and you'd have to get a new hammer. Oh, and like, you would have to like really hammer this on quite, quite tight. The other thing with knockoffs is they're specific to rotation. So, so you can't interchange the left and the right oh. assemblies. Otherwise, the centrifugal wheel, I, I believe it to be true, like the, you know, the rotation of the wheel could un, undo it. Unwind the, the, the And I, I think later designs of it had a pin, like a, a pin that would, yeah. but I, I mean, the people that are, are really passionate about the knockoff wheel will say, oh, they're fine. There were never wheels that fell off. Um, but, you know, I, I think there's probably some truth truth to that that if you didn't have the proper process hammer it down use the locking pins that wheels could could easily fall off so for for the knockoffs there wasn't like a torque spec you just kind of you, bashed it and put a pin inside and I, just hope for the best yeah i was like, <laughs> hammer the shit out of it pound feet and, and then it stops moving and that's yeah. when you're like yeah. okay okay it stopped but the safety pin for safety yeah. right align it and off we go right um and then along the timeline, this is when 1950 Porsche decided. Is that a 1950s Porsche sports yeah. race car there? That's not 1950s. <laughs> There's is it? no way that's 1950s those are, those, are, those are BBS shows from 2000. LED lights. On Sorry. That thing. <laughs> Sorry. They're not 1950s. Yeah, I don't know. I will, we'll come back to that right. in a moment. But Who made this chart? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. Now. I had a day to put this together. Um, it's one day's worth of research. So take everything that are we say. Are those BBS with the CHs? <laughs> those are motorsport wheels. They are motorsport. They, they go a way back. And you know what? They're cast. Yeah. That's how old motorsport wheels they are. They're cast wheels, right? But, but look at the tire on that car. That's a 1950s tire. 
like low profile. Cup, cup two R's. Yeah. Stickers. <laughs> Stickers. <laughs> Stickers, yeah. yeah. On the side. Yeah. But anyways, at this point, I think right. the, uh, what I got in the timeline through like the little bit of research is Porsche being Porsche decided to go create their own variant mm -hmm. of the knockoffs of in, in, in mm -hmm. one variant or whatever. Right. Um, but I thought a significant timeline was the 1960s when they started the, the safety regulations basically said to the points that you were making where the, the knockoffs were not sufficient, safe, right? They're yeah. not safe. So they needed to come up with a different variant of, uh, how to attach the wheel onto the hub. Right. Um, and that, that's when it started forking off into racing and road cars, road cars started to adopt like the four five and six lug systems. And then racing kind of kept on formula one and NASCAR with this, uh, this, this new central lock system, they called it the hex center lock, uh, right. system. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, up until 1992, Ferrari were the only ones that were still kind of offering the, 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 the wheels in this form. I mean, they went into that, uh, yeah. hexagonal, like sort of, uh, central That's lock a, system I mean, yeah, with the, the pin. caption, but that is a classic F40. Yeah. yeah right. What was it? I, I, you were saying this as well. Like I didn't quite understand this non-spline central lock hub and mm -hmm. splined central lock hub, but yeah. So if you if you look at mine, I don't know if you had it pulled up, you can see it's it's uh, what is that? What is that? Five. Uh, That's a six sider. Six. Yeah. yeah one, hex. two, three. Yeah, of course, six. hex. Um, and yours the is the spline. If you, I don't know if you can. So the Porsche one, I think, has about 20 teeth, right? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to zoom in there. And, and it comes with a special tool, of course. An adapter for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, that's an interesting timeline I didn't know about. And then at 19, by 1992, Ferrari just stopped doing central locks altogether. And they went to this I know, five or six lug systems at that time. And, and there was a big gap uh, in the road car segment where none of the road cars had central locks mm -hmm. unless they were in these high and Porsche were the ones that came back with the Carrera GT in 2004, introducing the central lock with the, the twenties spike, yeah. you know, ad adapter system or whatever. So to bring back Eric's, uh, point about the Corvette, uh, knockoffs and being directional. Uh, so the Carrera GT has, uh, center locks left side of the car, I believe is red. And yeah, and the opposite side blue. is blue. Yeah. So is that also the same reason? So you don't mix up the sides, or I, is this just? I wonder if it's the, the direction of the threading, uh, perhaps. I read it somewhere. I don't remember it fully. I mean, maybe you guys Unless they comment. both spin forward, mm. so each side spins the opposite direction. Maybe I'm not sure. But but the, there be. is the yellow and red variant, and that that you are not supposed it's, to mix them up. It's red and blue. Red and blue. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But I thought that was interesting where there was a big gap before Porsche reintroduced it to the road cars. And I think now it's a very predominant thing with like Turbo S's, yeah. the GT cars. Um, it's cool. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's exclusive to uh, Turbo S and GT cars. GT cars, I yeah. think Turbos don't well, get it. And the GTS's. Yeah, GTS. GTS. The, yeah. Is, is the GTS a GT car? I'd say no. In the letters. I'd say no. It... It's, it depends who you ask. The owners of GTS cars would say it is a GT car. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was there. Um, but they, they declare it as like a daily usable yeah. a GT3. Yeah. That's how a GT, a GTS was classified as, right? It didn't have the GT3 motor, but in terms of width, actually, no. The GTS is wider than the GT3. Yes. It's a wide body. The at GT3 back. So they were a unique car on its own, but mm -hmm. still classified as a... Uh, daily usable GT3. Yeah. Let's not go there. That's another debate. <laughs> yeah. We keep coming back to that, eh? I know. Every yeah. time you're here, we talk about the GTS and it's like, ah, oh. I just asked a question. <laughs> How about that M3, Prabhu? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, of course, then Conan Seg yeah. has it now as well. Lamborghini introduced it back again in 2011. Do, and their do all Lamborghinis now have it? No, or no. just the Aventador? The Huracan is... Uh, so, no, even the, even the Aventador, the base Aventador had a five lug. Mm. When you went to an SV, SVJ, uh, those had center lock options. But the entry level Aventador, I believe, was five lug. So it was exclusive to like... It's almost like you're comparing a, 
uh, Carrera S to a, let's say a GTS. Yeah, it was that difference in in in, in model that uh, designated whether you had five lug or center lock. Yeah, now it's very popular. A lot of people desire center lock wheels as yes. well, yeah. um, or center lock hub systems. I think it looks cool, like to all the things that we discussed earlier as well. It, yeah. You know, Various, the, various the big, pros. The biggest pro, I think, is is the looks, in my opinion, yeah. is why I would want to have them. And then other than that, I wouldn't want to have them for all the <laughs> other it, reasons. If you search this, there's there's a lot of people on YouTube that say uh, it's just it, it, not practical. It, it doesn't make sense to have it on a streetcar. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one, one could argue yes and one could argue no. Uh, again, from all from, for me, it's cool factor. Can, can I ask, because I, I think you have the the special torque wrench. Yes. And breaker bar. Have, have you ever used it? No. Okay. I, I'm afraid. So to take the, the central lock uh, off, um, there's a process behind it as well. Right. You have to like lift it off on jacks. Yep. You can't have, you have to have the suspension. Apply the brake. Apply the brakes. Then, then you got to torque it off. And then if you take it off, you have to apply the special grease. Yeah, aluminum paste. Yeah, yeah uh, um, onto it before you apply it again. And then torquing it back to what, like 850? Four, no, 440. 440. 850. Carve a hole in the wheel. <laughs> have, have you seen that video where I think they're trying to, I don't know if they're trying to like Break loosen it. And it breaks a thick gauge of steel pry bar. Like it's... And you had like center lock. Yes. Yes. So that was on a Lamborghini it? SV. Right. And I yeah. think they were, were they cranking the wrong way or something? Or? You know what? They, it, cause they were going down, which strikes me that it's probably the wrong way. I don't know. Something happened, but they, yeah. you're right. They, they sheared off the whole, right. uh, the, you center, know, uh, center the center insert for the center lock. Oh. And it was off. solid steel, not, yeah. it wasn't like a hollowed out bar. Wow. Yeah. And there was like 10 of them jumping on this thing. That's it, what happens when you talk to 850. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's why I didn't do it. <laughs> I got the numbers all wrong. <laughs> yeah. But it's definitely, it's, it's more of a procedure, yeah. like you said. And yeah. I mean, once you do it once, twice, I think it becomes a regular uh, maintenance yeah. or, or, you yeah. know, anything. Like five lug, I do it without even thinking. That's you right. Know? Yeah. You know, I've made mistakes in the past of cross-threading the bolt and I'm like, fuck. There goes my hub. Yeah. Um, but the center lock, you mess something up there. There, there is no redundancy. It's you're replacing the hub. Yeah. yeah. And that's an expensive job. I've just seen like on on Porsche, maybe other brands too, where uh, I've seen people opt out of it, like on a GTS or where they, I, I've seen a GT3 RS. Yeah. A 997.2 with five lug. Wait, a GT3 RS? GT3 oh, RS. It's dot white. One. Dot one. No, dot two. Really? Dot two with five lug. And I said, this is one only. And he actually sure? went through the five lug conversion. Oh, he did it oh. after the fact. After the after fact. fact. Yeah. Okay, okay. I don't, it wasn't factory spec. Oh, okay. He, he went so through. So he ruined the car. Yes. The resale. <laughs> <laughs> It's one to one, <laughs> but the, and there's I, but there's been some GTS comment of the night. <laughs> so one of one, I like that. If the, you could tear your car to shred, it'll be one of one. One of one. But there's GT, GTS owners that have also done that. But mm. you could you could tick that on the option list when you order. The That's car. right. On the yeah. GTS, you have the option to yeah. not do center lock. But then you know when you look back at the cars that have center lock and don't have center lock, they they resell. Uh, at a higher value, right? They're a bit more desirable now on a GTS with center lock and without. Yeah. Sorry, it, they're more valuable with center lock. With the center lock, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, yeah. ironic, isn't it? <laughs> well, I, I guess the market has spoken. But yeah. you know what? Let's it's... let's be uh, let's be honest though. A majority of people, let's say they like the look of the center lock. How many people do you think actually remove the wheels themselves? Yeah, it's so true. Very, yeah. very, very few. I think we're a select right. few people who actually change wheels and do things in our own or a garage majority of gt3 rs owners are bringing it to the shop for yeah. regular maintenance and they're not removing wheels in their garage no so <laughs> no it's not um, really a concern for them in my opinion right yeah i mean we've we've talked about porsches with central lock and it seems like they're the only brands that are kind of mass producing them right. in their road cars now right yes r racing various brands use them but on the road car territory, I think Porsche just dominates in terms right. of bringing that to the market, right? 
Yeah. Would would like hypercars all have center? Oh locks? yes. Yeah. Like the, like a Chiron that's going to have center I mean, locks. I mean, if we if we cap it at not looking at million dollar cars, mm-hmm. just affordable cars like cars for you and I. Right. I think Porsche is the only one that offers that's center right. lock in yeah. a 250k range car. Yeah. Even a one 200k car, 180k right. car. <clears throat> but hypercars, yeah, truly, they all have these. Like Koenigsegg is one. The Pagani is another. Is there a hypercar that doesn't have center locks? Ooh, that's a good one. I didn't look. Bugatti. Bugatti. They don't. Well, have, let's look up Chiron. Bugatti doesn't have a center lug. Do you have the internet? Uh, Navara on doesn't have a center lug. Um, almost every modern Ferrari doesn't have a center lug. So that is true. Yeah, look at that, eh? Bugatti. So yeah. okay, Bugatti does not. Most powerful car in the world, right? And it has a Volkswagen Jetta. <laughs> Full pattern. <laughs> I mean, th- so so it begs the question. Like Ferrari isn't using the, they scrapped the whole center lock idea. They mm. use they're using five bolt. Bugatti is using five bolt. The new uh, uh, Rimac or Rimas, how is it Rimac. pronounced? Rimac. Rimac. They they don't have a center center really, lock eh? either. Uh, so what's the whole? Hype uh, and, and this behind? is a two thousand horsepower car. Yeah, and they don't have center lock. So, but like it, the motorsports aspect of it was for wheel removal very quickly. Yes, that, like maybe on that front. So is know. it is it more of a heritage? No, thing? no one's no one's tracking a Chiron regularly, right? Yeah, like maybe that's the it. defining thing. Whereas people track nine elevens all the time. That's true. Yeah, C- consistent performance. Yeah, but are they going into pit lanes? And trying to swap the tires in under 15 I, seconds, right? I, I think it's because Porsche has this whole cup series as well, right? Where they have these 911s yeah. and they're reusing a lot of parts, parts. Bin from that, right? And yeah. you, you see a lot of the, the Porsche will t- talk about their GT cars deriving motorsport uh, technologies, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's just something that just carried over from their motorsports. That's what I think, yeah. Because yeah. even like McLaren brand, they don't use center lock. Yeah. I'm not sure about the Senna. I don't remember, to be honest, but... All the other models, they have regular five bolt hubs. Actually, they're center lock. Yeah, they're center lock. Which so, would make sense, right? That is a purpose built track motor sport monster car. kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, from a from a track perspective, from a racing perspective, yeah, it's super easy to go in there with a torque gun like F one. Go yeah. Vroom, 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 vroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I think that's the impetus of of why they would do it. Do you know what's actually funny um, that? BC Forged, uh, wheel company. Yeah, they actually offer uh, I, I, center lock conversion kits with their yeah. wheels. I don't understand that what, though. Uh, sorry, and so, it's, so I've got a five lug system, but it can be hidden with a center lock. So what they do is, when you spec wheels, let's say you yeah. have a wheel that's twenty by you know ten, with an offset of twenty. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to reduce the offset by ten millimeters. Yeah. So you can hide the bolts, and recess the bolts, and recess the bolts, and then you, you finish it off with a, with a center lock hub. So basically, you have a center lock wheel that is bolted to a five lock system. Mm-hmm. So the benefits, I think, are just purely aesthetic. I don't but, think. Yeah. But haven't haven't a lot like even like an old BBS? Like I can think of like a w- wired style mesh style so i know BBS i know what you're saying has that no it's, it's not just the center lock nut but it's it's so so what you're thing. referring to is actually a, a regular five lug wheel with a cover that yeah. imitates yeah. the center no, lock yeah for sure yeah so but, I, but I, i'm thinking of like a bbs because then it even has the the that, bbs emblem and it sticks out and it mimics the look of a center uh, lock. Yeah, that's yeah. right yeah it's so, not you know functional saying? no no it's more aesthetic it makes it Completely. look like a yeah you can't lock. spin yeah, it or it's like a three inch center cap mm-hmm. with yeah. an incorporated hexagonal uh center lock looking bolt right you know it's funny though i mean you you, you bring that about uh bc forge uh the m2 has that as a, a m performance part you can get a center lock conversion so for the M2. You, you know really? why? I think it's because the M4 CSL that just launched has center locks. Ah. So I think they have that in their parts catalog somewhere that it's available. Because that's the only modern BMW that actually has center locks. Mm. It's an abortion of a car, in my opinion, <laughs> but it has center lock got options. got demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's... I'll bleep it out. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to be apolitical. I thought this was talking about cars. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> but it, it's interesting. I mean, no, it's nice that the M2 owners have a right to choose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, future M2 owner right here. Yeah. You know, say, yeah. Yeah, be kind. Scotch and whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, Overheating once more. Overheating, yeah. yeah nice. That's okay. That's okay. Cheers. So, mm. I think overall, if I were to choose, let's say, a car like a GT car, uh, I'd opt for the for the center locks as purely for aesthetics. Yeah. And I, being a car enthusiast, I I think I, I'd invest in the tools to remove the wheels properly, despite all of the pros, despite and cons. all the cons, the because cons, yeah. it's the only downfall is just the removal. Uh, and you get used to it. And you'll get used to it if you have the tools. So. And and then speaking of tools, we we talked about this sort of torque gun now, center lock tor torque gun that you can get, and there was this one video I was watching today. It just sort of came up, and we'll just say it's called. Uh, it's called a ren torque, okay. and it's quite interesting how he <clears throat> uses it to break it and, and bring it back on. Just using a regular torque wrench. What? what? What's the what's the Ren? Is that has any? Like, well, it's the Ren Sport. Like it's the okay. German. Yeah. So is is it like a po is it like a poverty spec impact gun? Is that what it is? No, well, let's well, have no. a look at it. Show okay. Me. I'll, uh, we'll... I, I think it looks like it uses another point of contact for leverage. Yeah. Let's. If you see it. Play. So he's got the the center lock guide, just so you don't damage the PCCVs. Okay, it's got that nice... No uh, grease. No, he has it on there. He's, you look at it, there's a lot of paste right. on it. Oh, better be there. It's there. <laughs> Mike, watching this? <laughs> okay, so I don't think they'll be able to hear that, but I think he's just hand tightening it. Yeah. Okay. And now, is it... Is the front wheel, is it contact on the... No, it's hanging. jacked on the, it's the hanging. hoist. Okay, I can... Am I the only one that notices the minimal clearance between the caliper and the OEM wheel? Did yeah, you see how close the caliper comes to the wheel? Oh, yeah. It's, it's very, very close. It's pretty tight. Like, look at that. All right, so there he goes. Yeah, so and it's it. that, that adapter doubles the torque from that torque wrench. Right. Okay. Now, what if, like, I guess you'd have to have a a pretty open faced wheel to allow for yeah. clearance. Right. And I think my wheel would be fine, but yeah, yours will be fine. But if you get like a VBS, wheel, yeah, a big mesh. Style well, I wheel. think, I think this is like a enthusiast, um, not enthusiast. What's the, what's the, what's the word for those, for the Porsche enthusiast that doesn't change the car. Purist. Purist. Yes. <laughs> it's for the purist enthusiast. <laughs> OEM wheels are bust. <laughs> But, uh, you know, to, to, to the point where we, one of the cons was it's super difficult to take off yeah. and put back on, a tool like this will make that, it that super easy, right? And that's, you just, that's compatible with your master own torque wrench. Yeah. yeah, a little Mastercraft torque wrench. How much is that? I haven't looked at the pricing, unfortunately. But maybe we could look it up yeah. later. Because that, that video looks like it's two years old. Yeah, it's been around so for a it's while. It's been in the market for a bit. I've never seen that before. But I think it's the same thing that's used on that impact wrench that uh, Obsessed Garage showed off, right? Uh, or Tavares has too, right? Yeah, it's it's. I That's, think it's just it's about bracing because you you know, imagine trying to handhold four hundred and fifty pound feet of torque as it's going. Yeah, you're you'd break your wrist. Yeah. So he's using the tool with an impact, right? Because. Because you need something to brace. I mean, you use tools all the time. Like no, that's can, right. That's right. But I mean, what's the point of the impact if you have the tool where well, you can just use a torque wrench? Well, impact is often like higher speed. This mm -hmm. is not high speed. This is low speed, high torque. But this does the the whole process of rotating and back 60 degrees it off. Oh, and then retightening yeah. okay, it. Okay, okay, gotcha. Which you have to do manually. You have so to that's know. the advantage of using the gun with the tool. Right. Okay. It's programmed to do that mm -hmm. 60 degree rotation counterclockwise. So watch, watch when he presses. You can... Yeah, he goes backwards now. Yeah. That's crazy, eh? That's five thousand dollars. Yeah, but you know, it's like half a set of wheels. <laughs> Just invest in the tool if you're keeping the car and you have it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. Look and at him, happy camper, showing <laughs> off his new tool. Matt's a hero. Yeah. He is a pioneer. Pioneer. It's changed, changed a lot for a lot of us. Yeah. So 
um, you know, going back to the con of uh, potentially being hard to manage, to take a wheel off and on and put it back on. Mm -hmm. Tools have evolved now. Perhaps it's yeah. an easy easy thing to do now for center lock owners. Yeah, I'd say it's it's not as relevant as it as it used to be for a lot of enthusiasts. Yeah, I think the further we we go into the future, the easier it'll be to mm -hmm. own a set of center locks. I, I definitely do it. I mean, the if, even with the wheel buying, I'll just go to you or Peter yeah. and make sure I get the right wheel and the yeah. right offset. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I send a lock all the way for me, I think. Yeah, it just looks cool. Eric, I think you're a five bolt kind of guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I have center locks. Yeah. yeah. So But you know what? I don't think I'll ever do the conversion from a five lock to a no. center lock. No. no that's I it makes no there's sense. so much uh, so many other things uh, I could spend money on uh, on my car. Yeah, I completely agree. And yeah. you know what, in some aspect, I actually think it looks worse on a car that doesn't mm. It doesn't belong on, for example. I've seen them done on an M3. Yeah. Someone went full force and did a conversion, and it looked funny. Yeah. It didn't look good because I mean, it doesn't belong on that car. It just doesn't yeah. doesn't suit. I mean, now with the M2 coming from OEM, you, would you say it suits the car? I think if it's if they're introduced as, as an option with an OEM wheel, mm. it'll look more fitting. But it's, uh, you know, some people's taste is not really... Uh, the best right so when you're choosing a, an aftermarket wheel that doesn't look in uh, like at home on the on the car and then you're adding a center lock feature to that mm -hmm. wheel it makes it it throws it off even more yeah i totally agree yeah well i mean there you go i mean what what do you all think center lock wheels or would you use adapters to convert your five lug system into center lock let us know in the comments below i think that wraps up our core topic yes Episode sir too cheers thank you for that one Ooh, cheers Mm. I think this is going to turn me into an alcoholic. Well, it's once a week per bowl. I, I know. It starts with once a week and then twice a week. Next thing up for crack in the alley. <laughs> is this still live? Are we live, guys? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> a guy, nummy, a friend. <laughs> you know, he starts with Darth Vader, yeah. you know, spooning him to... Dark alleys. <laughs> bah, bah, bah. So <laughs> ominous. Can we, can we go back to that F1 principle? You want to redo what? it? What's the F one? <laughs> He's so upset question? about the I'm Ferrari. Sorry. I, because I like I. This is last week too. Okay, just I'll record him it. saying the name of the principal, and we'll insert it there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll do it in the Darth Vader sound. Who's the Who's the principal for a Ferrari? Frederick Vassour. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Got the the call up from Alfa. He Romeo. came from from Alfa Romeo. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Are you sure he didn't come from Lada? I thought he came from Lada. He he drove a Lada to work <laughs> at Alfa Romeo. Oh, uh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, and then earned the promotion to All right. team principal at Ferrari. Well, we'll see how he does this year. Good luck. Yeah. Hashtag facts. Good luck to Ferrari. Yeah. yeah. Good luck to Char Charles as well. Yeah. He deserves a win. Go Chuck. <laughs> but I am i don't know. I think I'm rooting for Mercedes. I want to see them get past the... Uh, yeah, me, me too. Yeah. Me too. I, I actually feel... I feel bad for not so much the team, but for for Lewis. Yeah, because he's. Uh, I think he was. I think if he won last year's champ championship the year or the year before, sorry, he would have retired. Yeah, I totally mm -hmm. agree. He and wants to end on a high, right? He right. was on a high. Yeah. He wanted to go out on a high, and he's been forced back into the game. Yeah. Until he can, and it doesn't feel the same. It's like Arnold. Yeah. He was winning, you know, uh, Mr. Olympia, and he went out when he won. He, he called it quits and yeah. he it's it kind of like and then he came back and they did so pump, well. the pumping iron documentary yeah. was his return yeah and he won again exactly oh, yeah. there you go and then yeah. he did terminator and then i don't did, think we're gonna see and then he did daddy daycare <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do daddy daycare yeah yes he, he did kindergarten cop kindergarten cop oh wait, yeah. daddy daycare is uh, sorry vin that's, diesel. that's no 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 eddie murphy eddie murphy oh that's right eddie well, murphy uh vin diesel and did a uh, jeff garland Vin Diesel Similar. tried to fall in the steps of Arnold, but yeah, I mean, his t-shirt wasn't tight enough. Yeah. <laughs> Lived his life one quarter mile at a time. Yeah. yeah. Family. Yeah. To family, guys. Yeah, to family. family. There you go. How, how does he say it? To familia. Uh, familia. Yeah. Is that what, like... Uh, Spanish? Spanish? Yeah. Dom Toretto. There you go. Know. 
Tuna sandwiches, no crust. Yep. No crust. I like my crust. Nobody comes here for the tuna sandwiches. <laughs> Nobody. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> but I like my crust. You owe me a nine second car. <laughs> a 10 second car. Is it a 10 mean? second car? <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's true. I guess that was fast for well, what, what, what year was that? That's movie? fast today. Ten That's, seconds. Yeah, ten fast. seconds fast, man. <sighs> yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's not it's wincing. not Remac fast. You know what's fast? I have to say because like I've been watching the Wow videos and all those drag races. The the naturally aspirated GT3 is a quick car. Yeah, being naturally mm-hmm. aspirated like in a straight it's line. It's free revving, man. There's no turbo. I know, lag. but even for like I I get it's a fast motorsport car. But in a straight line, it's fast. Even versus a V10 R8, it's much quicker. I, I did see that with the the V10 R8, the GT3, and then was it Z06? Uh, Z06 smoked everything, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's a that's a an Wait, amazing the new, power. The class. new GT3, the 992 or the 992? 992. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But the Corvette Z06 uh, is a marvel. Like that. Yeah. that it ate about twelve car lengths on yeah, a GT3. Yeah. Even have, have you seen a, a lot of them? The engines already the fail, engine failure after I've, two thousand kilometers. Seen, I've seen some of that. I think too. I've seen two or three. But that's like a typical Corvette thing in all their motors. I, I don't think no, so. The I, LS has always been pretty. I mean, there's been. I mean, there's been yeah. stories of engine blowups. Not like it's not like a hand, like it's happening left, right, and center. There'll be one of like new from of, factory. Yeah, like brand new. Yeah, but remember, this is a high performance motor. And not everyone's going to treat the car like an enthusiast. Some people buy it and they just go up thrashing on the highways and doing yeah. so. It don't do the follow. You remember the GT3 procedure. had a huge engine problem yeah. also the first the generation. One dot one. They actually recalled all the motors, right? So, anyways, I wanted to say once again thank you for episode two. We discussed central arc hub systems. I hope you all enjoy this one as well. If you did like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below on some of the topics that you might think will be interesting for us to discuss on this podcast as well. Episode two of Card Talk is complete. Thank you for the time. Cheers. Thank you. Till the next one. Yep. That's a wrap.